Thank you so much, Holly. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, thank you for hanging out with us tonight, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or jump in. Yeah, I um, I wanted to know, you, you mentioned something about the war, and if you could tell us as much detail as possible, what is being fought over, how many sides are there, who are the sides, what role do we play in it, that kind of stuff, I, I would love to hear more. For sure. So, um, speaking of the secret war, you know, the biblical sense that uh, there'll be chariots of fire in the sky, you know, a uh, battle for everybody to see. And, and I, I've seen so many craft at once with a group of friends that they were shooting at each other. Um, so that definitely is something that's a reality and I, I think may come to a bigger blow. But um, when it comes to these shadow beings and hat man phenomena, um, what they're after is our literally our soul. And that sounds so cliche, but there are millions in the world now who realize that uh, they're fighting for their lives in the middle of the night. And, and, and I like to point to the fact that, you know, when we're at our, pri at our prime, you know, we're, we're, we're physical. The sun is shining. We're ready. You know, we could go on a sprint, you know, if something comes our way. But no, no, these things wait until <laughs> our guard is down when we're snuzzled in our, our, our beds. And then they're like, oh, let me let me put the whammy on you and, and paralyze you. And, oh, now I got you. Like, oh, big man. Oh, boy. Yeah, you got me now. Uh, you know, it, these things are cowards. Yes, they're powerful, but we are more powerful in our full uh, spectrum of ourselves. So don't be intimidated. I get it. They're ugly. They're baddies. Nobody wants to deal with those things head on the bright and the shiny. Uh, it's a sunny day, but you especially don't want to see them in the middle of the night. So, but anyways, back to uh, your question. It, these things are absolutely trying to take your soul in the middle of the night. Um, when your guard is down, when you're 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 recharging yourself. So, the battle is going on, and now imagine that. You've just got thrown across the room, which Hatman loves to do, um, beats you down, gets you to within an inch of your, your wanting to, to live, and you just give up, like, I can't take this fear anymore, I, I just killed me already. And that's when he laughs and punches his fist through your chest and pulls your soul out. Oh, but this is a guardian angel, right? No. Um, this is what he does. Um, so this is a battle. Oh, and then, then if you manage to crawl back to your body and get back in and you jump up and you can't go back to sleep and now you got to go to work in the morning and pretend it didn't happen. So what do they do? They Google man in a hat, something attacked me. And that ends up in my inbox. And I'm like, what a shame that you couldn't turn to the person closest to you. You have a Reach out to somebody on the opposite side of the globe or some guy who says, he's the expert, don't worry, those things can't hurt you. Um, this is the battle, guys. This is the battle. And what's that old saying? Uh, the greatest trick the, the devil ever did was to convince people that he wasn't real. Uh, this thing is real. This is, this is real. This is the war. Um, now, and speaking of on the alien aspect of it. Absolutely. These, there's a, there's a, again, it sounds cliche, but there are a group of positive alien beings who, uh, like the one I had the most contact with, uh, looked like a, a cherub, uh, a small angelic being. Um, speaking of God, Jesus is real. This is the, this is the only thing that can help you in the face of negative aliens say his name and in the face of shadow people hat man say his name they will recognize that force i'm like what you take me back to church pews <laughs> wow i had left that thought behind i bashed jesus in the secret war book i'm like i'd seen angels i've been to this this heaven place over and over again i've seen aliens and all this stuff and uh, I thought, and I put this in the secret war book, 
If Jesus were around, I think I would have seen him by now. That's what I put. I was such a skeptic of him being real uh, today. I knew he was real in the past. And he was supposed to come back someday. But I didn't think he was active because during that time, people were saying, Jesus is in a, my bowl of soup, you know, uh, he's in a tree trunk, you know, things like that. And I'm like, come on now, guys, like, this is not real. Okay. So I'm like, you see a hippo in the clouds too. So I put like, I dedicated a pretty good chapter to bashing Jesus showing up. And lo and behold, while I was waiting those four years to get that book published, who do you think showed up? <laughs> I was blown away to have witnessed him. He showed up. And that, if I thought I had experienced something before, everything changed. And is the only reason that I have the nerve to have spoken to anybody after I published that book. Because I was extremely um, unwilling to speak in public, not even for a class project. I gave up grades in college constantly to not have to do the presentation. And if I didn't have straight A's, I was being dropped out of the program. I didn't care. I was, I'll take that A minus and risk being dropped because I'm not speaking. But because Jesus showed up and he told me to speak and not to worry what other people say, know that I'll be there to give you the words, is what he said. And um, he told me to finish writing my book. And that was the secret war. Um, so it was through his direction, talking about possessed aliens <laughs> and uh, the shadow beings and the hat man and how they are literally here to, to take over this planet as they've done others because this dark source is growing. And they told me it would hit a certain level where it would absolutely expand and uh again i'm like what would my little silly book do you know i'm in college I, i'm just gonna scribble this this book and hope it hits somewhere and who would have thought i'd be the only person to ever discover name define trademark and warn people about two phenomena um I, and heidi as a, as a follow-up can i just ask a really sure. stupid question like wh what happens if they get our soul? Like, what does that mean? Let's say, let's say I get punched through and th it punches through my chest and something takes my soul. Well, how does, how does my, my life change in, in this world and in the other world? Yeah. Um, again, this is the cliche answer, but I've, I've spoken to people who were drug out of their bodies into a place. A, a child told me, smells like stinky eggs. It was so hot, I thought it would start on fire. I couldn't take it. But it was in the earth. It kept pulling me, pulling me. And, and they had to essentially kick themselves free to get away. Um, Do you think but, there's a, a connection between the sulfur and greys and the sulfur with alchemy or a connection to the underworld, the dead? Is that a coincidence? It's not, it's not a coincidence. Uh, that that smell, that awareness that triggers us, right? It's like, what do we identify this with? Na something nasty, but uh, nothing warm and fuzzy I want in my life. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's a coincidence. I, I, don't, I don't go for coincidences. But yeah, so it, it, the goal, when, when they got you, they're able to possess you and control you. Now, this is something to, to know, too. These beings, uh, hat man, shadow people, a lot of people are like, well, I did a Ouija board. That's why I must have come. Or I smoked a lot of weed. Or I'm like, I said, uh, most of the time, you know, sure, they, you might get a visit. But the ones that they really go after are these bright lights, are these really gifted people, these artistic people. Because we're evolving, people. We're evolving. And they don't want that because. People who that are artists, they observe things differently. They, they pay attention because they want to replicate it in their artwork or whatever it is. Um, they might get a lot of deja vus. They might get visions every once in a while, you know. Um, and these things notice that you can notice them. 
and they want to stomp out that light and control it. Uh, they do not want us to evolve. So what happens when we lose our brightest? <laughs> we stay Neanderthals, right? So um, this is the problem. This are, is the are you problem. saying like it make they're going to target a Mozart, a Beethoven, uh, a Tesla because it holds society back when when they die prematurely? Yes, it does. It does. It it holds us back. It really does, and uh, it it holds us in a pattern. Uh, there, it's it's like the wizards keeping all the secrets to themselves, like our government does. You know, um, they're like <laughs> enjoying themselves with that. But you know, if uh, if we can have a more even understanding that we need people to be risk takers and to move us to the next level of understanding, uh, expanding our, our, our souls, our spirituality. It's, it's important. But if these things are snatching and controlling all those movers and shakers, my gosh, there are puppeteers. All right. I'm just one, one last one in this series of questions. I've, I don't think <laughs> I've ever heard somebody say risk takers in the doom space that we need to be risk takers can you can you explain what you mean by that? Why? What? What? Why is it important? Well, if everybody falls in line and does the nine to five, who's going to go out and and uh, discover and dis uh, talk about two phenomena that's affecting the entire world? <laughs> Speaking of myself, you know, it's like who? If there's not somebody that steps out of line that makes the the sacrifice to not get the the house with the picket fence and get married, have the children and get stuck in that cycle. You got to have the one that that's like, all right, guys, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fall up for that, because I, I really think I can make a difference over here in this corner and and scream as loud as I can and hope people get it. So uh, that's risk taking, that's taking that chance, even when everybody's saying, Whoa, you're nuts. <laughs> so It's important. Heidi, thank you so much for, for asking my, uh, answering my questions. Yeah, of course. Thank you for asking. All right. Um, I know Larry really wants to hear Heidi's story about Jesus, so I'm going to make Larry come up. So, Heidi, we're going to withhold your story about Jesus until Larry is forced to come up and request to speak in the Doom Room just so we can screenshot it for later memes. I love that. Yeah. Meme might get, it, get to it sooner because of me, but go ahead. Oh no, Ophelia's going to blow it. She's going to blow my plan. By the way, Ophelia, number one, thank you for being patient, but number two, I could have gone my entire life uh, without seeing the spiders that you drew and posted in the space. So thank you so much for that. And uh, go ahead and ask your question for Heidi. Uh, okay. Uh, Heidi, hi. <laughs> the thing that got me interested was uh, my new friends here on X who I've had a lot of shadowy entities psychically i'm sure try to keep me away from so i wouldn't hear your story um oh, i i posted some pictures in the purple pill some paintings i did um and i am uh kind of in shock right now uh because as as a little girl i had these reoccurring uh, dreams, quote unquote, and I was going to a all white space with these, and I had a white robe, and there were there was a humanoid I was walking with with a bright light for a head, and they had a white robe on, and there were gold walls to our right, and each had a different crystal. Um, and um, after that happened, as a child, I went to a nativity play, and I saw. And this is five years old. I uh, saw Jesus in the manger as a little baby doll. And I knew that was the same energy from the place that was filled with love. Um, <laughs> I'm so um, thankful. I, I've been in a dark place. And um, you gave me so much faith and validation. Um, I also have seen the uh, shadow entity and it was a spider at first before it shape shifted and all I'd ever hear was oh hat man or this kind of shadow people but I kept saying no these things are like spiders they're formless they're ugly 
they hate us because we have a form, because we have a soul, right? And I've always said this, um, and I'll land my plane soon, but I just kind of want to give you a little background. My dad was um, involved in some programs, and in the early 70s, had an encounter with um, a shadowy being at the foot of a bed while he was paralyzed. And um, it spoke in a language he didn't understand. It, sound, it sounded ancient. Um, and he had a pain in his side while this event was happening. A triangular, fiery pain. And all of a sudden, this white plasma ball of light came through the window. And he couldn't even move his head, but he could see it out of the corner of his eye. And it started arguing with the shadow. And in the end, the plasma ball said in English for my dad to hear, You cannot have him. He is mine. To the shadow. And the shadow left. Um, so you have illuminated me greatly tonight. Um, you have revalidated my faith. You've made my light. Uh, me want to shine my light. Even before this, somebody told me, let's light candles, you know, to get the demons to go away. And I'm going to go do that right now. And I just want to say, um, oh, God, Jesus is real. Angels are real. And um, your soul exists. It's so important. And there are, there's something that wants it. And um, it wants to drag it to that dark place. And um, there is, it's because you are precious. Um, you're important to something much greater than we can even imagine. So thank you. You're amazing. And I can't wait to read your book tonight. I'm going to go do that tonight, girl. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, man, you got me emotional. That, uh, you know, just thank you. Thank you for, you know, coming on to 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 say that it, it makes everything worth it just to know even one person made a difference for it. and every single time I'm moved because um you know a lot of people they're so anxious for the end of this world to happen it's so rotten it's so this and I'm like do you not understand if it ended now we'd lose so many people because they don't know everything yet we've got to We've got to be a friend to everyone, everyone, and, and tell them what we know. Tell them what we understand. It's too important. It, in that love soup of light, we were all there. We were all there, every single one of you. Nobody was a stranger, and we we're just in this love of light and just perfect. So... Jesus is so real. I, I stutter in my mind on how to express that. And, uh, you know, I, I won't say how I saw Jesus yet because Fringe mentioned somebody. We're just trying to hold yeah. off. We're trying to get laid. Yes, I'm not going to say. But, uh, you know, all I could tell people was Jesus is no joke after I saw him. And that's why I titled the book that. Because that's all I couldn't. I couldn't uh, say that any clearer, um, but uh, yeah, there's there's so much that um, there's so much to us, and, and I hope that we keep shining that light among everyone and with no limitations. Be that shoulder. I saw something horrific, and and take that moment, you know, um, hear him out, and I'm really powerful about your father and what he what he witnessed. I had something similar with. Uh, balls of light, spheres of light would attack the shadow beings. And uh, I had friends come over just to watch. It was like a, a mini battle going on where I was living. So thank you. I appreciate it. That was an incredible uh, story, Ophelia. And if you want to see, I joked about this stuff earlier, but um, because it's just not my favorite thing but Heidi if you want to see the uh, paintings Ophelia made it's down in that purple pill you could see uh, the creatures that she's referring to and um, we'll go to NHI welcome to the space hi thanks so much and uh, hi Heidi thanks so much for everything you're sharing um, I, I have a question um, how does this um, phenomena and like the beings and the things you're describing um, interact or relate to you know the stuff that happened with um david grush and also how everything also seems to have ground to a halt with that regarding you know the government's approach and attempts at trying to disclose things and 
um, what is the connection between those things as it relates uh, to the beings that you've been describing, both the positive and negative? Thanks. Uh, yeah. David Grush, he spoke of those beings as uh, being interdimensional. And hey, when I had my, my UFO group for all those years, MUFON approached for uh, me to make my, my group a, a chapter of theirs, but I couldn't do that because they were so much more about landings and the scientific and the, the, the hardcore evidence of, and here I'm sitting in a room of, 50 to or more people coming monthly to, to discuss the very uh, uh, various aspects of this interdimensional alien type beings, you know, but that was, that was too woo woo. Um, I find it fascinating that that is the, the mountain he's choosing to, to describe what it is that's going on and that our government is quite aware of. And, uh, why I think this is this is uh, something that needs to be more uh, accepted within our community, out out away from the government who knows all the answers already, um, and, and and stop uh, bashing or attacking each other and and like that's too far out. It's not too far out for them. It's not too far out for the the government. Um, they're very 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 much aware. Um, so when somebody tells you. Uh, I walked through a wall last night. I went here. I saw that. Um, we we definitely have to uh, stand in it and, and and take the time to learn from it because these things are placing their bets on us not to figure them out. But now, a lot of us that are in, you know, I, I have my podcast with Coast to Coast AM, and um, we get contacted by CIA. I'm sorry, ex CIA people and whatnot. Um, and we get told things and, and I, I think it's to sprinkle information out there a certain way or, or whatnot. Um, but I'm not on payroll, <laughs> you know, I listen, you know, and I, I, I hear and, and the chatter that's, that's, that's going on. And, um, apparently there's a conflict with the Pentagon and, thinking all these beings are demonic. They're very much into the spiritual aspects of it, while the CIA is like, but they're here. Let's be honest. Let's talk about it. So um, that may very well be the what's going on. Um, I, I'm, I, 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 haven't, uh, I haven't experienced it to know 100%. We're always having to take somebody's word for something. So we're humans, and uh, they could be lying. <laughs> But I have heard, uh, I believe it was, yeah, Nick Redfern, he wrote a book um, speaking on how uh, people in the government reached out seeking uh, spiritual help and, and dealing with these demonic aliens that were infiltrating their lives. Um, I wish I could remember the name of the book, but, you know, it's, 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 a, it's an issue. So um, I, I, I appreciate that David Grush uh, came forward to speak very matter-of-factly about <laughs> interdimensionals, you know, uh, because that you would think this, this conversation uh, on aliens would go there always now, you know, because it, this is where it's at. Why, how are they not smushing in these, these craft as they come to a dead stop after going 2000 miles per hour or whatever it is, you know, how? Well, I guess they must have some interdimensional qualities. But guess what, guys? So do we. We absolutely do. Where are we going when we close our eyes? You know, we're experiencing and learning. I, I know I go places. Uh, <laughs> and and this, this, is, uh, this is something that is very different. Uh, I, I've not spoken about this very much, but... Um, for years and still every once in a while I'll get an email from somebody that didn't know I existed and, and especially when I wasn't out there putting so much I had a you know UFO website whatever and uh, people would reach out to me and say you're a real person I'm like yeah and you saved my life I saw you over here do I look familiar and they'd send me their photo and uh 
they, sometimes they did look familiar. And sometimes I'd ask, well, how the heck did you find me? Well, you told me your name. And uh, I know that I visit and go to different places, and it seems to be in a helping sense. And I never, I never uh, knew what that was. And I, and I asked people, I've interviewed, I don't know how many people over the years doing talk radio for over 15 years now. And I'm like, what is this? You know, people are seeing me in different places. I remember going to these different places and helping them. And nobody told me anything. But then, let's <laughs> just say a friend uh, in, in the theological studies told me, well, that's called bilocation, Heidi. Only the saints do that. I'd never heard of that. I'm not Catholic. I, I don't know what that word, what they mean about that. But bilocation. So I know it's real. I know I have the emails. <laughs> you know? Um, so how is that possible? How is that possible? If we're not interdimensional as well. So these... These beings, because they have a shiny craft, they're not superior to us. We don't need a craft. We could get there on our own. Uh, Heidi, is there any kind of punishment reward dynamic in relation to disclosure that you've noticed? Um, kind of like you mentioned with the, the special talented people, they, they sort of get attacked. Are we moving... Can we track how close we're moving to disclosure based on how much hitchhiker punishment we, we experience? Ooh, that's a juicy one. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to, to best understand um, what, you're, what you're aiming for with... Uh, well, I just want to know, like, is there... If, if these beings sort of want to keep us down... You know, people who are experiencing the, the shadow people and the hat man phenomenon, will it be more of an ex abusive experience the closer we move toward disclosure? I don't think that the, the disclosure is going to change that one way or the other. Um, but I want to make it clear, <clears throat> and this is something that came from CAF, that alien being, um, if you're having these types of uh, abduction experiences and it moves to the level of you're near the end of your life and you, you, you cross over, guess who's at the end of your tunnel? It's these, these things. They, they follow you into the next life. You would think they have no you know, moral reasoning to be able to have access, but you do. Um, you, you do have that connection. So you have to break that tie here because they've essentially gotten you to agree to the contact. Now, that sounds crazy. Who would want that? Who would want to be abused? But they cheat to get that permission. It's not like, hey, 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 hey how about you coming on over here and we're going to do these horrible things to you until you can't take it anymore. No, it'll be something silly. Like... <laughs> I don't know, you might see a piece of uh, uh, wrapping paper on the floor outside of your door. You open your door, you grab it, you're like, you knew something wasn't right, but you open up your door anyways and grab the piece of paper, brought it in, threw it in the trash. Well, you accepted something of theirs. <laughs> it was a dream, though. <laughs> they don't care. It was it was a motion of acceptance, opening a door, pulling something into your home. So um, it's it's important to be vigilant to not, uh, how can I say, not to allow them to uh, infiltrate. But when they've got a trickster element, does that sound familiar? That's being used in the government language lately. Trickster, they're talking about shadow people, hat man phenomenon especially. Um, <laughs> you have to just be on your P's and Q's and put up a protection to prevent them from having access to you. Um, that's something I could go into detail a little bit um, later. But uh, but so if they do get their way, if you do get stuck with them, you've crossed over, they got you now, they keep you in a holding pattern. You want to know where that is? Well, it could be where you just died at because what's holding ghosts in one location? Shadow people. 
hat man. Oftentimes you'll you'll uh, hear EVPs, electric voice phenomena, capturing a ghost saying, he's coming. Well, who's coming? Me, Jesus. Hat man. So people will often see a shadowy presence in a horde of souls that are trapped. And they feed off from that. They control that. Anything that they can control from uh, evolving further, that is an ultimate goal. Um, so if disclosure happens to say, well, guess what, guys? Our aliens are real. <laughs> and it's like, well, does that mean all this other stuff is real? Well, um, one of the biggest organizations, which I, I respect, uh, you know, MUFON, I, we need that. We need that. We need that scientific uh, part. But they are not big supporters of this talk of um, interdimensional alien aspects. Um, you know, they're, they go there and then they go back and then they go there and they go back. But there's great people making a lot of uh, great leeway in um, the conversation. So um, I, I'm, I'm really hopeful that they open up the, the doors to it as our government has. Uh, well, I'm sorry, David Grush has because um, our government's not saying anything about it. But, uh, but yeah, so I, I hope we have a, a better conversation about all of this soon. And I, I have to ask, because I know we have some parents in, in this room, is there anything you you tell parents and how early you can assume there might be like a, a legitimate shadow phenomenon going on? I, I imagine we've all been that kid possibly or or, or treated, you know, something as, as, a, as a childhood fantasy or magical thinking when it was a gen genuine paranormal experience. Is there any pointers you have to, to give parents? Uh, you know, shadow people, they love to target children. Um, I honestly think that Hatman is quite a perv about it, in, in fact. Um, so it's like instead of, and, and this is something that Calf told me, it's not just a possibility these things will come, it's a threat for them to come. Um, so it's best to be proactive instead of reactive and bless your home bless your home, put up that protective bubble and have your child participate in it. And, um, you know, I, I don't know how to place a value on a soul. So I give out this information for free on how to bless your, your, your home, uh, to keep them away. But then I also did, uh, cause I'm a cartoonist as well. I, I, I drew the hat man. It's a book, um, that illustrates in cartoons how to bless your home, you know, to, show you how to do it but otherwise i send out the the process of it as well if people reach out to me um, at heidihollis.com so yeah so there there is a there is a way so i I'd definitely be uh on top of it because these things will come as a uh, as a toy that happened to me it came as a toy oh cool i want to play with that you know and <laughs> i wouldn't have said anything to I, I didn't say anything to my mother you know so it's like, <laughs> they probably won't tell you, you know, something friendly came my way, you know, so cute. So we have to be absolutely on top of these things instead of waiting for something to happen. Uh, Heidi, there was a, there was something I was watching online. It was, it talked about a, a redo of the cover of Whitley Strieber's communion book. It was talking about the eyes. They did a redo of the eyes to give it more of an iris or something. And these irises in both versions of the communion book they're known to have some sort of um imprinting permanent kind of phenomenon they show up on emf readers um many many experiencers or abductees are known are told not to read this book at night some take it don't take it in the room with them do you do you know any kind of connection with with eyes in general and maybe even whether that whitley streber cover re relates to any of the red eyes people see in, in the shadow people i know it's a long long stretch but I, I have to ask no i appreciate you you asking uh i'm not familiar with the cover and um what's being done with that but i know that whitley streber has taken on different topics um one in particular i believe he oh gosh i heard him speaking on some program where he said that he has a better version uh, about 
that are battle with the soul more than the Bible or something. And uh, so take that into account of where he's coming from with that. But it's not, don't quote me on that, but it was something along the lines like he is able to, oh, he's a, a more pure connection to God and uh, putting word out there about that. So um, however you want to interpret that. So I, I don't know about... Um, that cover though and and what might be behind it but uh yeah uh, there's a lot of different conversations going on out there that always surprise me um you know i'm christian I, i'm not shy to say because i feel i cheated in my faith of course um so i i don't uh i don't understand how it's the only faith that is uh often targeted you know, it's like, can make, can't make fun of the others. <laughs> Just this one. You know, he's in all the cartoons, you know, doing horrific stuff. And um, it's like probably because it is so absolutely correct about who Christ is that the targets keep flying at him. So, Thanks for answering all my, all my questions, Heidi. Thanks, Heidi. Um, so let's just do a bit of a dive into what these things are, and we'll just go with the shadow people. Um, again, I've had, I don't know, if you go four experiences a year, which is pretty conservative, over 37 years, I'm up to 140 some odd uh, experiences just with the shadow people. That doesn't include the aliens. And like I said, they have transported me during abductions. And um, that took me many, many years to figure out and to be aware and awake enough to understand that that was happening. And you have, so, so there's obviously, and, and this is my personal opinion from my own experience, there's obviously a connection between the shadows and the aliens uh, that people are not putting together. And now you have, uh, I was in a chat, the, I, I'm in a chat with Ted Rice, I, I talk to him just about every day, and he was the one uh, Carla Turner wrote Masquerade of Angels about. So Ted Rice was a psychic medium his whole life, and then through some interesting circumstances, he came to understand that his spirit guides were actually um, what we call aliens, and that they had actually done some terrible things to him as a child, and they were trying to direct him, you know, off his path, his life path. And Ted Rice just said to me the other day, very matter-of-factly, that he um, has seen the shadows on the ships hit a button on their suits and turn into gray aliens. And so he says it's just technology that they're using to turn into shadows and then back and forth into grays. And so I found that fascinating because I have not seen that for myself. I've just had the shadows rip me out of the top of my head and transport me to the ships. And so Ted has now made this correlation between a technology that they use to turn themselves into shadows. Um, I've now had other abductees say the same, other comments out there of people saying the same exact thing. So what do you think about that? Well, because they're absolutely linked um, and, and able to shapeshift themselves to appear as one thing over another, uh, that's not surprising to me. Um, they like to keep things confused so people can't put their finger on what's exactly going on and who to blame and, and where it's coming from. Uh, they could also disguise themselves as very positive beings too. But trusting your gut, closing your eyes, that's what I was told by Kath, People need to be able to close their eyes and see what's before them. Feel it. We have a gut for a reason. Um, so they are able to interchange. Um, I saw a shadow spider drop down from the ceiling, and I woke up because <laughs> it was so big. I could always feel them coming. And, you know, the, 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 the legs were outspread while it was dropping down. And when I woke up, it retracted and folded the, the legs in and formed a gray's face. Uh, so, yeah, I, I learned pretty early on that they were able to uh, do this little trickery as well. But um, this is a, a, also this, this form, this shadowy form, replicates 
this uh, dark source and and uh, represents this dark source as well. So it is, um, you know, and yeah, aliens have been seen right alongside of shadow people from the beginning. Uh, so that that's a, kind of a, a common thing that I that I was uh, started getting thousands of emails about it. You know, it's like. You know, it, so the, the correlation, the connection was absolutely uh, always uh, known. So it's, it's you know, when, when I started, uh, I've been talking on different shows, it's, there's so many different elements to get into that uh, I haven't had uh, a whole lot of times where I get to say, yeah, by the way, the, you know, hat man's right next to the, you know, the, the, the gray alien beings. But I, I have, you know. Uh, over the years quite a bit but you know it doesn't get into every conversation so I guess it's new for some people if they haven't heard um, you know this being spoken of that way but I mean I've always come at it from uh, that absolute connection them being possessed as such and you know you've, you've heard of people becoming possessed and they contort they change these uh, and saying it's just a, a technology uh, when they're interdimensional beings it could be a technology for the more solid beings, but then, you know, not every alien being needs a craft so they can formulate into this shadowy thing as well. So, um, hat man, <laughs> Oh man, it, I can tell you what he looks like. Um, he does. It, it, I saw the, okay. I'll, I'll tell you really quick. This is what, uh, my good friend sent me, and a bust image, uh, a image of this bust uh, of of this being, and I said, "Oh my gosh, somebody did a really, really good rendition of Hatman." And she's like, "What did you say?" I'm like, "That's Hatman. That's his true form." I have it on my website. It's um, on uh, shadowfolks.com or heidihollis.com, and she goes, "Heidi, this is a hundred years old." And I was like, what? What do you mean? Rudolf Steiner made this of Araman. And I was like, Araman? I said, this is him. This is the guy. And she said, Heidi, Rudolf Steiner said, a hundred years from now, which is now, from his time, <laughs> uh, this would come into fruition, that this force of Araman, this creature, would come to the forefront I literally leapt up because I was so thrilled to find I found him. That was his his real name, his physical name, Araman, and what he was. And, and then I had to learn what what is this Araman? It's like he's aiming to limit mankind evolving, especially in technology, limiting them, um, controlling them. I'm like, this is the same scenario and. You know, I was told, um, I reminded that there'd be others like me who remembered before they got here and what they were here for. And uh, little did I know, it was 100 years apart with Rudolf Steiner. Um, he was uh, founder of Anthroposophy, a uh, philosophy of uh, understandings that, uh, I, I'm not a, I'm not an expert in it, but it, he's, he's, really uh, a risk taker and somebody who thinks outside of the box that uh, set a lot of people into different areas. So, yeah, so I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm getting off uh, off center, but I hope I uh, answered your question or in there in the mix. <laughs> yeah, it was in the mix. I was I was just trying to uh, look and see what, what that looks like. Um, I'm sure I'll find it later. So I'll post it. Okay, awesome. Yeah, because I've seen I've only seen Hatman twice, um, and then I had a very strange Men in Black this last week. Um, so it's all very interesting how much it's connected, and I think this is what people don't understand. Like I said in the beginning of the space, if you ask, has anyone been abducted by an alien? They, you know, maybe two percent will raise their hands. But if you ask, have you ever seen shadow people or Hatman? The whole room, the hands go up, and so that takes this to a whole other level. You know, we think it's only so-called abductees or so-called experiencers. 
um, seeing aliens, you know, that's if anyone's lucky to even have a memory of what actually happened because so many people don't even have any memories. But for whatever reason, when they come in the shadows, um, a lot of people are seeing this and experiencing this. And so think about what that number is. I don't know if you even know what that number is, but think about how many of us are actually out there uh, dealing with this. And people have no idea that it's related to alien abduction. Um, and I wanted you to discuss a sleep paralysis just a little bit. So... When I was um, experiencing this, um, there was no internet or anything like that, or at least it certainly wasn't in my house, and, and I didn't have any access to it. And then when I was about 28 or so, 30 years old maybe, somewhere in there, um, I read an article online, and it said that, don't worry, this is just something called, what was happening to me, was don't worry, this is just something called sleep paralysis, and you're just hallucinating. And so I thought, oh, thank goodness, you know, because there wasn't anything as trust the science back then. I mean, the science was trustworthy, right? So I thought, oh, thank goodness, I'm hallucinating. I told my, um, my siblings, don't worry, we're hallucinating. This is nothing, you know, just lay, there, just lay there and let it pass. And I cannot tell you how angry that makes me um, in hindsight, now that I know it's absolutely real and not a hallucination, and we don't need to go into those reasons. But if you could talk a little bit about sleep paralysis, how it relates to shadow people and hat man, and while, yes, there could be an actual real phenomenon of sleep paralysis that we do experience here and there, um, these things are hijacking that process. They can literally paralyze our bodies. They vibrate your body. They can take your soul or your physical body from that point. And it is very much a real thing and, and very much related. So I'd love to hear you talk about that. I, I'm sorry that I cut out a little bit where I didn't hear uh, everything that you said, <laughs> what you were asking. It was kind of going in and out because it's on my end, though. Oh, that's okay. If you could talk about sleep paralysis a little bit and how it relates. Yeah. Um, so that was the first attempt to poo-poo what I was putting out there. Um, <laughs> I, I was uh, being contacted by different people like, hey, so we want to do a film about this. You know, one, guy, one time I was, uh, uh, people were buying the book and sign, I was signing them and grab the book, thanks, I'm going to go do a film on this now. I'm like, not without my permission. I mean, what are you talking about? Like, that's so weird. Uh, so I never thought to go looking to see what it was that people were doing. Um, turns out that I believe that was, I never watched it. I never watched any of these uh, films or shows depicting my stuff because it's just gut-wrenching to me that they would have the nerve first off and to get it so wrong. And uh, when I heard sleep paralysis i'm like hold it i learned that in school um you know that is a medical condition that uh where where we have um our, our brains release a chemical to allow us to rest and not like if we're having a dream of running we're not running in our in our in our sleep in our beds you know and and to address that as if here's your answer phenomena suddenly those are the first words I hear. Oh, yes, I'm suffering from sleep paralysis. No, you're not. You saw something? No, you're not. You're not. That's, that is medical. We're talking about uh, a demon. <laughs> and, and to see the disregard for the whole phenomenon, for my whole effort to be, everybody calm down. It's okay. Here, take some more drugs so you'll sleep through it as we essentially... <laughs> Uh, allow you to be <laughs> taken by demons. Um, it hurts so deep, and it still does every time I hear the words sleep paralysis in the face of what I know to be true and what's actually going on. And then I have to wonder, what would drive people to think this is okay to, to put that title on there? To make people feel, this is the answer, don't worry. I'm like, oh my gosh, I forget where we're at. This, this is, this place that we're, we're in is uh, run by a lot of darkness, you know? And uh, it breaks my heart because it's steering people in the wrong direction. So if you are somebody who 
are paralyzed and your eyeballs open and you see something in the room and oh wearing a trench coat and a hat <laughs> we're not all sharing the same delusion or hallucination what are they thinking that is not even a thing we cannot have mass hallucination i just almost weekly i get an email that says oh my goodness i thought i was the only one experiencing this so it's not a tulpa where we're, we're creating this thing. We, a lot of people are still feeling alone in it. And I'm just, it, it's heart-wrenching. I am hoping, um, you know, it, people in this room, people that know what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to push here, set those people straight when you see that. Say, hey, it, the truth is over this direction. Oh, here's HeidiHollis.com. How about that? Because I don't know what these people are doing that are grabbing a hold of this and making it something that it's not. It is not a, a, this phenomena, aliens, shadow people, hat men, it is not a medical phenomenon. This is a real thing. Um, so it's a big difference. People that There are people who have serious problems with such a thing, but that's medical. I'm not talking about a medical condition. Um, so... I, I, I just hope that, uh, I hope that people keep digging if that, is, the, the lie is seen first before the truth is heard to them. Yeah, it, it's really frustrating. And, you know, I think that we, I, I don't know where I was exactly when we got taken over by a bunch of people who... Um, just want to explain everything away as if it's not happening and think about the number of people who are experiencing this and they've now been assured by the science that this is nothing and nothing to worry about and uh, nothing to panic over and that's just a hallucination what you're seeing in your room and don't worry that they're taking you out of your body and transporting you to a spaceship that's a hallucination too so think about um, how this program just goes completely unchecked because the so-called science has assured millions of people that this is absolutely nothing and nothing to worry about. It, it's, it's pretty nefarious when you really think about it. And it just turns us into, you know, docile um, victims because we don't even think it's anything to worry right. about. And it, it takes, you know, don't worry, you don't need to fight, you don't need to bless your house, you don't need to pray or do anything like that. This is just nothing, you know, just go back to sleep whenever you it's can. Ho it's horrible. And... You know, millions have gotten the right answer, have heard. I mean, I've been a regular on Coast for over 20 years lately. They, people distorted it on purpose. Like, what payroll are they on to do that? Why would they want to? What, what would inspire a person to do that? It, we're hearing about all of this satanic ritualistic stuff in Hollywood, and the people that run this world. Well, hello. And they're doing it in a lot of different arenas, and and they push the narrative, and, and they've they've caused a lot of harm. And uh, you know, I'm just one person, but it's I'll, I'll welcome an army of people to uh, you know be sure to set it set it right. And that's my hashtag is Shadow People Origins, Hatman Origins, because getting to the 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 basis of where it started with the truth of the matter, not. Uh, allowing somebody to, to try to steer people to lose their souls, not just their lives, but their souls. That's sad. Howdy. Uh, um, recently, uh, things have been coming up in space regarding invoking uh, Jesus Christ or uh, your religious God uh, in these situations. Oh, no, it's uh, you were to give a list of things that people could do to defend themselves in these experiences, even if it's just to ease their mind, um, the most powerful things you think uh, somebody could do to um, ease this situation. Yeah, so um, in the face of negative alien beings, if they're good alien beings, this won't hurt them. Um, <laughs> invoking the name of Jesus to say, you know, the name of Jesus, you know, I, I command you to leave. Or, or I've just been able to whisper his name and they left because I, I trusted in what I was saying. I've had people, this gives me goosebumps, that were absolutely paralyzed at, with Hatman within an inch of their face with his disgusting teeth 
you know, smiling ear to ear with that horrific grin. And they couldn't move. And they couldn't say Jesus' name. But guess what? They made the sign of the cross on the roof of their mouth. And he left. I mean, how powerful is that? So, in the face of this, his name. But, I, you know, and, and I want to say, there's no but to it. I mean, I'm Christian. I know that works. I've had uh, good friends that are uh, Israeli Jewish, uh, Muslim, too, that have been faced with these dark things. Well, God, call upon God, the one true God. And that's who will help you out of that situation as well. Um, it's important to know that you shouldn't have to be in that situation. You shouldn't have to put up with any of this. Blessing your space. Um, I, I People, if they write me, I will send it to them for free. But I have uh, the Hatman book, too, that is drawn out on how to uh, bless your space. And you know, people have told me, uh, I, I don't hear back from any people saying, well, that didn't work. Every once in a while, people are like, well, you know, I'm still having, and it's like, it, nobody has perfect faith, you know. I always say I cheated in my faith because uh, Jesus showed up. Um, but, of course, people have questions to their faith, and and it's so hard to get to the point of no doubts when you are doing this blessing in your home. To put that ethereal foot down with Jesus in it, these, these things are not coming through. Hey, Heidi. Through your internet. Sometimes you have to repeat it uh, if somebody brings something into your home, though. I'm sorry, what's that? Uh, dog days, do you mind raising your hand or do you have uh, an emergency <sighs> question no. for Heidi? Because we do have a couple other hands. My bad. I was, was going to say, Heidi, 365 times. And in, uh, in the Bible it says, don't be afraid. I was just like going to reinforce her point. But yeah, my bad. Sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. Thank you. Um, yep. Did we finish with Tiff's question, Heidi? Go ahead. Well, well, that's true what he's saying. It's like having no doubts. It's hard to have no fear. Even I have had the fear. But you know what? I, I don't, don't run from it. Don't swing at it. Stand your ground. Say a prayer. Say his name. That has literally saved me so many times in the face of these things right in my face, hulking over me in broad daylight. Um, because I, there's no way, there's no way I, I would have made it. I, I was pretty sure I was going to fall over dead from a heart attack. But <laughs> it, having, having no fear is, is easier said than done. But absolutely, no doubts in the power of God, of Christ. That's what, that's what I know works. But the blessing to protect yourself so you can rest at night, so that you stop wearing you down, uh, that is uh, another barrier to do, to create. 